This is a video tutorial on how you can make your very own vodka or neutral spirit at home. So these bottles here contain neutral spirit, which is essentially vodka, but hasn't been made with potatoes, but it's made with sugar, yeast and water. So to this neutral spirit or vodka, you can add your own essences to turn it into anything else, such as rum, scotch whiskey or even liqueurs. And here's one that's been made with apple schnapps. And this one here has actually got musk stick lollies dissolved in it. So these are the containers that you will ferment what they call the wash in. The wash consists of yeast, sugar and water. And basically it's, it's, it's just your breeding place for your yeast to create alcohol. So the first step with all of your gear is to make sure that it is sterile. You can use sterilizing powder or in my case I just use hot water. Made sure it's thoroughly clean and wiped down with a soft cloth and now it's good, sterilized and ready to go. Right, so the instructions on how to do this just show you to do this a little bit different and by all means follow that but for me I do it slightly different because this way it works perfectly fine with me. So I add the sugar, then the water, I make sure it's the temperature is within tolerance. If it's not I can add either ice cubes or hot water to it to bring it up to that between 30 and 40 degree mark and then I add the yeast. So I've made sure that the taps are in the off position, now we're good to start filling these up. So 6 kilos of sugar will go in here and 2.2 .2 kilos of sugar will go into this one. So that's a lot of sugar in there, but we're not going to drink it, the yeast is going to eat it, and it's going to turn it into alcohol. Because I've already added the sugar, I'm going to end up filling this to the 25 litre mark, and this one is going to get filled up to the 10 litre mark. Now I'll just fill this up with normal cold tap water into the fermenters. Now I don't use anything fancy like filtered water or bottled water or anything like that because this isn't the final product in here. The wash will ferment, it'll create the alcohol, but you're still going to be running it through a still and then carbon filters to get rid of any off taste. So it makes no difference what water you use as long as it's clean. If it's muddy river water, yeah, I wouldn't use that. But just normal tap water works fine. Once the fermenter's filled up, just stir it around for a minute or so and all of the sugar will easily dissolve. Now my tap water is at 26 degrees and that is fine. It doesn't have to be 40 degrees like it recommends. As long as it's above 15 degrees, you're absolutely fine. Now this fermenter has 6 kilos of sugar in it, so to make that dissolve a bit easier, I'm just adding 1 litre of hot water into the sugar. So it's partially dissolved, just give it a stir with the spoon. Now I've stirred it through a bit but it's still pretty thick and it hasn't completely dissolved but it's just really just loosened the sugar up. Now we're going to add the rest of the water to bring it up to the 25 litre mark. That's at the 25 litre mark now, now it's time to just give it a good stir through to make sure all that sugar is dissolved. You'll know when your sugar's dissolved because when you scrape the spoon along the bottom you won't get what I'm getting here where you've got a whole spoonful of undissolved sugar. So just keep stirring it until that's all dissolved through. So the next stage is to make sure that the fermenters are within 15 to 40 degrees. Now this one's saying 26 and this one, oh it's not really working so we're going to go off this one, 26. So I'm happy with that being within that range. Now that's obviously centigrade, not Fahrenheit. The next stage is to put this turbo carbon into the fermenters. Now this is a liquid carbon which just adds to the wash to absorb a lot more odors and flat off flavors. So what you've got to do is you've got to massage the packet to make sure it's not all clumped down the bottom to make sure it's all run through the packet. And we're actually going to use this for both the fermenters. So we're going to put the majority in here and a little bit in the other fermenter. A good way to mix this through is just to rub it between your hands. But before we put this in, we're going to give the, the wash a really good stir with the spoon. So as we're pouring this in, it mixes itself in. The reason I stir it up like that is so when I'm pouring this in, it doesn't splash up too much along the sides of the fermenter and just stick on there and essentially just get wasted. It might look black as tar now, but don't worry. By the time the fermentation is over and you've added the turbo clear, this will be absolutely clean and clear. It'll just look like water. All right, so we'll give it one more stir 
This time we're just getting it all agitated around and the fluid's flowing so that when we add the yeast we just have to sprinkle it on the top we don't have to vigorously stir it. The reason I stir it around before adding the yeast is so that it's all swirling around so when I sprinkle the yeast on it will just evenly coat the top of the wash. All the haters out there that say that I shouldn't be able to use one yeast and I won't get enough alcohol yield from this, well um, you're wrong. You put the yeast in and it eats the sugar and it multiplies. It might not multiply as quick, you, you might have to wait an extra half a day for it to catch up to what it would if you had even more yeast, but half a day, that's, that's no biggie for me. Alright, so what you do is you just sprinkle this in on the top of the surface like this. If you've ever used baker's yeast for anything, it looks exactly the same. It's just freeze-dried yeast. And there's also that white stuff in there, which is just your mineral powder and stuff like that. Now, I'll just sprinkle some in here as well, just to make sure it's all in there that I need. And put the rest in here. Now, you don't even have to mix this now. As you can see, these bubbles are forming. The yeast is soaking up the uh, water and the sugar and it's multiplying already and it's just becoming unfreeze dried. So now it's time to put the lids on. This lid is easy, you just put it on it and inside this top part is a carbon filter in there to try and absorb some of the odours of any gases escaping so your house doesn't smell like a brewery. And this lid is the type that just screws on. This thing here is called a bubbler and basically it's a one-way valve which is quite crude yet effective so I'm just going to squeeze the side of this here so when the pressure increases the um, liquid pushes down and the air pushes this down and the air will force its way through here and out but not the other direction now one of these fermenters is pretty cool because once it starts fermenting this thing will start bubbling away like there's no tomorrow Right, it's been about an hour now and it's starting to bubble away so that means the yeast is eating the sugar and turning that into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Right, so now that's fermenting it'll take about five to seven days and then it'll be completely done. It's pretty warm weather it's topping up about 28 degrees now in here so that's certainly going to start fermenting away pretty quick and I'll probably notice by this evening that this will be bubbling like blah 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 blah, blah just going crazy. Uh, it is a turbo yeast, so it, it does ferment pretty quick. Now, it'll take about five to seven days until the fermentation process is complete, and it'll be about 14% alcohol in them. All right, that's the end of this video on how to set up your sugar wash and get it fermenting. The next video is going to be about doing the distillation process and the filtering.